again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz Fantasy Tanks. Oh, so many people complain about fantasy tanks, be it the Draculo, the Howl thing, or the Smasher, blah de blah de blah But did you know that in the tech trees, there are tanks that were never conceived? They never existed. They are truly made up. And I, we're now going to look at five of them. Now, to qualify, they are not subject to a blueprint, they are not subject to a wooden mock-up, and they never even got to a single prototype. They are just figments of the imagination. So, kicking us off is an American tank, the T-25-2. This is a Tier 7 TD, and according to Wargaming in Blitzhanger, it existed in blueprints. Well, that's not strictly true. It existed not as a T-25-2. In fact, it never existed, either in blueprints, line drawings, or even as a brain fart by somebody in the armaments ministries in America. This tank is pure fiction. It is pure imagination. Why do I say that? Well... This tank is a sort of hybrid. The T-25-2 in the game is a hybrid type tank. It is a mixture of numerous tanks, funnily enough. It really started life as a T-20, which was the replacement for the M4, but it's not a T-20. It's more akin to this tank here, the T-20E3, because the T-20 had the Sherman type suspension, whereas this has got the torsion bar. However, this tank never really made it past production and it was never envisioned to be a tank destroyer what then happened was they upgraded it even further to this tank the t23 e4 again similar suspension and as you can see the hull is now looking more like a t25 2. this however is a precursor to the pershing line this is just the americans toying with ideas they eventually moved on to this tank the t25 e1 this is actually a T-25, but as you can see, it is not an anti-tank gun, and it is certainly not a tank destroyer, and it certainly does not have the turret that the tank in the game has. That's not to say, however, that they never envisaged making a tank destroyer version, but it was never called the T-25. It was actually called the T-26, and the T-26 was just this. This is the prototype, the only one made. It's basically an M4 Sherman with a 90 millimeter gun. It was shelved, it was seen as pointless, they shelved it, and in the end they developed the M26, which is the Pershing. So, whilst it's nice to have a tank called the T25-2, no such tank existed and no such tank was planned. It is a fantasy tank. Moving on, we now have the Jag Panther 2. Now, according to Wargaming and according to Blitz um, Hangar, this tank was an upgraded version of the Jagdpanther, insofar as it had a 128mm gun and existed in blueprints only. Uh, again, that is not strictly true. What is true is Krupp did consider mounting a 128mm gun. But let's go back. The Jagdpanther. Now, the Jagdpanther was produced up until 1945 and actually started production in January 1944 and it was designed to house the 8.8 centimeter pack 43 gun because they wanted to have more oomph now this was a highly successful tank destroyer for the germans and as you can see it's based on a panther chassis and the casemate is at the front now a couple of things about german tank designs German tank designs normally have the gearbox and the transmission at the front and the engine in the rear, which is why a lot of their tank destroyers, which are based on existing tanks, the Panther, the Tiger, etc., the casemate is at the front. But this Jag Panther is based upon a Panther tank, which everybody knows. The Germans, however, towards 1945, decided to upgrade the Panther to that of the Panther II. Now, they'd already realised that the Panther was a good tank, and what they decided to do was two things. Firstly, they wanted to 
up armor the Panther because it was pretty weak. And secondly, they wanted to standardize components. In other words, they wanted to have the same design so they could churn out tanks quickly. And if you look, I mean, this is a Panther II chassis. The, the, the turret is not a Panther II. And it's very similar to a Tiger II. And that was the idea. The idea behind the Panther II was it shared similar components to the Tiger II, which is why the hull is very, very similar to a Tiger II. The thing about the Panther II, however, is this particular model, which is in uh, America at the um, Army Ordnance Museum, has the wrong turret. It has a Panther G turret. The Panther II was meant to have a Schmaltern turret. And there's a Schmaltern turret. One does exist that was de designed and developed for the Panther II, but um, after the war, the British decided to stick it on a range and blast it to smithereens. And the surviving example is now in Bovington Tank Museum, looking slightly worse for wear. But it would have looked similar to this. This is not a Panther II hull, however. This is just a normal Panther G hull with a Schmaltern turret married to the top. Getting back to the Jag Panther II, however. Now, the Panther II only made it to prototype. And if you go on the internet, you'll see this picture of allegedly a Jag Panther II. Well, that's about as genuine as an Essex Girls suntan and about as convincing as a Madonna's acting style. In other words, it's pure fakery and fiction. That picture is a Photoshop of whatever, who knows, but it doesn't exist. That is not a real tank. That is actually a picture of a Panther G hull with something photoshopped on the top. It's pure fantasy. Now, there do exist design pictures, however, from the Krupp factory. Allegedly, they've never been confirmed. Now, these design pictures are these, basically. These are line drawings. These are not blueprints. And this was Krupp's attempt to marry a 128mm gun to a chassis. Nobody said, however, it's a Panther II. And it doesn't say there it's a Panther II. It actually states Panzer Jäger Panther. Nobody ever conceived a brain fart that led to a Jäger Panther II. Why? Well, firstly, the Panther II itself was designed to be standardized, i.e. based on a Tiger II. Therefore, to have the casemate at the rear like this would make absolutely no sense. It would defeat the object. You would need to move the engine forward. Secondly, the Panther II hadn't even made it past prototype. So why would you even think about prototyping a Panzer Jaeger? You wouldn't. It's a fantasy tank. It didn't exist. It existed as a line drawing based on the Panther. Which brings me to this tank. It's another American TD. This one is the T-28. Now, this one is incredibly confusing. Like the T-25 too was confusing, this one more so. Because the T-28 did exist, but this is not a T-28. This is effectively what Wargaming are saying is a prototype to the T-95. However, the T-95 realistically didn't exist. That's the T-95. So we've seen the T-28 and we've seen the T-95. Now, what actually happened in real life was the following. The Americans wanted a big tank destroyer type tank. And the idea behind this tank was to firstly break through the Siegfried line in Germany, but then Germany surrendered. And it was then considered to be used for the invasion of Japan, which never happened. And the project eventually got shelved. But it didn't start life as a, T a T-95. And nor did it end its life as a T-95, oddly enough. It started out life as heavy tank T-28. But because there were issues with the naming system in America, it changed its name to the 105mm gun motor carriage T-95. That became official in 1945. However, because of the way things were done in America, they redesignated it yet again in 1946 to be called the Super Heavy Tank T-28. This is a T-28, and as you can see, it's got stamped on the mudguard, T-28. The T-95 didn't exist. It existed only as a designated name change from T-28, 
to T28. Now, the T28 we have in the game, strictly speaking, is a T28. But it's not, because what it is, it's one of these. Now, this is the same tank you've just seen, which is the T95. I hear you say. And the difference being is, if you notice, it's had the second set of road wheels taken away from it. So it hasn't. it's only got the one set of tracks, not two. The front, however, is a T95 that you get in the game. The front of the T28 never existed that you see in the game. And the T28 is pure, pure fantasy. Now, I could have picked the T28 prototype, the one with the turret. But funnily enough, that actually did make it to a blueprint, bizarrely. Although I say blueprint, it was really a line drawing, and it was probably the basis for this tank, the T28. So, the T28 we have in the game never existed, not in that form. That brings me on to this tank, the FV215B, the British Tier 10 Heavy that we have in the game. It's a lovely tank, and according to Wargaming and Blitzhanger, it was a proposed plan for a heavy tank on the chassis of a Conqueror Mark II. Um, the difference being that the fighting compartment was placed in the rear, but no prototypes were ever manufactured. So that sort of means that there were blueprints or there was an intention to design such a tank. No, no such intention existed. That is an FV215B. And as you can see, that's an fv 215 B183 in the game. This was what was intended. It was intended to have a 183mm gun, a massive derp gun, which is what we have in the game as the Death Star. And this was the intention. It was meant to be a super heavy self propelled gun. So the heavy version, the 215B, is a misnomer. It didn't exist. It was never intended to exist. This is the real 215B, which is the Death Star called 183 in the game. So, the 215B, I'm afraid, is another tank that doesn't exist. Now we move on to the VK72.01K, which is a tier 10 heavy on the German tech tree. Now, Wargaming state that this was a blueprint designed by Krupp to meant to be a up-armoured tank, effectively, and a heavy tank, or a super heavy tank at that. Uh, nah, I'm sorry, it didn't. There does exist a line drawing, but we'll get to that. This tank was never considered in real terms. Now, just for those of you who don't understand, VK designates a prototype tank. Um, so any tank that's got a VK in front of it in Germany is a prototype. The next line, the 72, means the tonnage. So this is a prototype 72 ton tank. The 01 means how many were made, that means there was one of them made, and the K stands for Krupp. Now, this is a picture of a so-called VK7201K, but it's not. This is actually a concept design for the Luva, which is another tank that was designed by Krupp. Now, the Luva ended up being blueprinted like the Luva we see in the game, although it was never produced. This design was shelved for various reasons. So the VK7201K didn't exist. It would have been nice if it would have existed. It was a Krupp concept of the Louvre. Nothing more. Moving on, <clears throat> we now come to this beast. The Jag Panzer E100. The Tier 10 German tank destroyer which bears a lot of similarities to the Jag Panther II, a tank we've already established that didn't exist. Now, this one is even more perplexing than the Jag Panther II, to be perfectly honest with you. The Jag Panther II is based on the Panther II chassis, which at least made it to a prototype. This is made based on this chassis. This is the E100 chassis, and there was only two of them made. Both of them are prototypes. So the Germans did actually conceive the E100 as part of what is called the 
Entwicklung series or development, commonly known as the E series. And there were numerous tanks in the E series. There was the E10, the E25, the E50, the E75, and the E100. Now the series was designed because they wanted to make it simpler and cheaper to produce these tanks um, and more efficiently than their predecessors. So they all had similarities, oddly enough. Now the way the series work is that the E stands for development and the numbers afterwards stand for the tonnage. So an E100 is a development tank that was going to weigh 100 tons and so forth and so forth. And they were based on current or existing designs. And the E100, oddly enough, was based on a design called the Tiger Mouse, which was effectively a Tiger II hull, strengthened, with a mouse turret placed on the top. But that never got off the ground, and they went straight to the E100. But here's the interesting part. We're not talking about the E100, we're talking about the Yag E100. A tank that was never even envisaged, never considered, wasn't even a brain fart of anybody in Germany. And Blitzhanger in Wargaming state that it was conceived as an anti-tank gun. Wow, I say utter BS. This was never conceived. There was no blueprints, there's no line drawings. In fact, there is absolutely nothing that it even points to an existence of a Jaegeru. In fact, that is an artist's conception of what a Jaegeru would have looked like. And as you can see, it's very similar to the existing Jag Panther. And why wouldn't it be? I mean, the engine is at the back, the transmission is at the front. And this is the thing about German tanks. Now, that is the closest you're ever going to get to a concept of the Jaegeru. And it's not. This is, in fact, the concept called the Waffenträger E100. The closest you're ever going to get to a Jaegeru. The Jaegeru is a fiction. It never existed, it was never considered, it was never envisaged, it didn't exist. This is our last tank. This is the E50M, another tier 10 German, this time a medium tank. Now Blitzhanger and Wargaming say that the E50M is basically a redesign of the E50, whereby the engine was placed, well, sorry, the transmission was placed in the rear. Uh, interesting concept. The E50 was called the Standard Panzer along with the E75. Now the 50 means 50 tons. The E75 means 75 tons. Both tanks existed as line drawings. Nothing more. That's all they were. Line drawings. And the idea behind the E50, which did exist as a line drawing, so to speak, was to replace the Panther and the Tiger I, and its design was similar to that of the Panther II. And it was going to have the Schmautern turret, but it was going to be up-armoured, and it was going to weigh 50 tonnes. But the thing is, the E-50 itself was merely a line drawing, so why they would then consider to upgrade a tank that they hadn't even developed, or even blueprinted, beggar's belief. I'm afraid the E50M doesn't exist. It never existed. It was never conceived. It was just an E50. So, those are the top five, I say, fake tanks that never existed in World of Tanks Blitz. But I'm glad we've got them. But the next time you want to whinge about fantasy tanks, the Dracolo, the Howl thing and the Smasher, just spare a thought. There are already fantasy tanks in the tech tree. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That's been my top five tanks that don't exist. I hope that was enjoyable. It was educational. By all means, comment, like, and all the other stuff below. If you haven't yet, please press subscribe. I'm like 120 away from 1,000 subscribers, and it would be super duper fantastic if I could get to that glorious 1,000. Until the next time, if you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord server. You can upload them easier there. By all means, follow me on Facebook or Twitter. It's always nice to have those things. And until the next time, I always say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that's what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.